Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at SmartLink from SkyDrones. Now SmartLink is a HD wireless video transmission and telemetry system. It's designed to be used with various autopilots and it allows you to transmit HD video up to 1080p back to a ground station up to 20 kilometers in range. Not only does it support video but it also has a Mavlink telemetry connection as well, UART and it also has a built-in companion computer so it allows you to run onboard software on the aircraft as well, connect it up to USB and actually have control over that via the ground station too. Now this system is compatible with Mavlink which means it will work with Audra Pilot as well as PX4 but it also works with SkyDrone's own flight controller as well. You can use it with the SkyDrone's ground station software but you can also use it with Mission Planner as well if you are using that on this system. Now what we're going to do in this video is give you guys an overview of what it does, take you through a closer look at the ear unit as well as the ground station as well and then at the end of the video I'm going to give you guys a quick demo of just the video transmitting on both their ground station as well as Mission Planner. Two. Now in another video I'm going to actually give you guys a demo of this out in action and try and show you what it's actually like and test some of that 20 kilometer range method as well and see how it actually holds up. Now just before I jump into the specs detailed on this one thing I will mention with this system is that it doesn't have a built-in RC control link. It handles video and telemetry but it doesn't have RC so if you're going to use a system like this you're still going to need to use your traditional RC for doing your main aircraft control and whilst if you are using Ardra Pilot you can actually control it fully over Mavlink you're always going to want your RC control backup as well and it is worth checking that out. So the next thing we're going to do is take a closer look over the unit itself and then give you guys an overview of some of the specs and the features that the SmartLink includes. SmartLink is a telemetry and HD video transmission system that is designed to be used with their own Smart AP flight controllers, but it also supports Mavlink, which means it will also work with PixHawk and other controllers that support both Ardra Pilot and PX4. It has a range of up to 20 kilometers and is AES encrypted, and it supports video telemetry over the wireless link. Taking a closer look at the ear unit itself, not only does it handle the video input and transmission, but it has an onboard companion computer as well. Now this companion is an ARM Cortex A53 quad core up to 1.2 gigahertz. It has 1 gig of RAM and 4 gig of onboard storage. And this allows you to run custom applications directly on the ear unit, so you don't actually have to have a separate companion computer on your unit. Now the radio system on this uses a dual antenna input and it supports the two 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. It has a bandwidth of either 4 or 8 megahertz and as I mentioned earlier it supports AES encryption. Now video latency on this system is said to be below 100 milliseconds on either HDMI inputs and it has a maximum range of up to 20 kilometers. Moving around to the side you will find a micro SD card input for the companion computer as well as the two HDMI video inputs. Now these support up to a maximum of 1080p 60 frames a second and can be selected via the software. On the other side you will find the reset as well as the micro USB port, two SPI ports, an I2C port and a UART port. Above this you will also have the 5V DC input. Now these SPI and UART ports are designed to allow you to connect it to your autopilot for getting additional data such as your telemetry but it also allows you to connect additional sensors directly to the ear unit as well rather than routing them directly through your flight controller. Moving around to the back you will find two USB-A ports and these are for connecting external devices directly to the onboard companion. On each side of the ear unit you have the SMA antenna connectors and then on the one side at the back you have a fan which keeps the onboard electronics cool. Underneath there's no connections and you simply have a little bit of conformity labelling and this is where you would be mounting it directly to your frame. Moving over to the ground station, this is what receives the signal from the ear unit and then you connect this to either your computer or your tablet depending on what setup you're going to use. Now this unit is housed in an aluminium case with a fan located just behind the SkyDrone's logo at the front. It has two SMA antenna inputs at the top and has a 7 to 35 volt DC input on the bottom alongside the micro USB connector that you will connect to either your computer or tablet. 
Moving around to the other side, you will find the status LEDs, which gives you information for the TX, RX and link condition, onboard CPU, as well as signal RSSI, which is split across three LEDs. Finally, on the back, you simply have the conformity labeling, just like on the ear unit. Now, looking closer at the specification, the system supports HD video to 1080p 60 frames a second, down to 720p 30 frames a second. As I mentioned earlier, the telemetry inputs support TX and RX via URTLL, and it supports MavLink, so it means it will work with PixHawk and other flight controllers. It also allows, obviously, control over the telemetry link as well. Now, the weight of the unit is 75 grams for the ear, module and 70 grams for the ground station and whilst the ear unit only supports 5 volt dc the ground unit will support 7 to 40. Included with the smart link is the antennas and these consist of two omnidirectional self-adhesive panel mount antennas for the ear end which simply connect via wires onto the SMA connectors and on the ground end they supply two 2.4 gigs high gain omnidirectional stick antennas made by TP-Link. Now, as I've mentioned, you can use SmartLink with PX4 or Ardra Pilot and any PixHawk or Cube flight controller. Now, here I've got it connected up to a Cube Orange via the UART1 port. Now, the standard cable supplied with it doesn't actually directly fit and you will need to make one up yourself to make sure that you do get the connections correct. Now, to be able to receive the video and telemetry data, you can hook SmartLink directly to Mission Planner. However, they do also make their own ground station software called Smart APGCS. And this does have support for Ardra Pilot and PX4 over Mavlink. And whilst it is designed to be used with their own flight controllers, you do have some functionality in this as well. And it does allow you to actually receive that data directly on their ground station as well as control the SmartLink video as well. Taking a closer look over their own ground station, here you will see you have all of the basic functionality that you get from most ground stations. In the top right hand corner you have the connection box for connecting to the SmartLink unit itself. Then along the top you have all of the basic telemetry data as well as the SmartLink ear unit data too. By double clicking on the little antenna you have all of the basic signal information as well as the settings appear for the SmartLink. Here you can change things such as the main frequency, you can change the bandwidth for the channels, ear end power as well as ground station power and also the ability to set a maximum distance as well. Under the security tab you have the ability to change the user and password ID settings for the AES encryption. Coming out of here in the bottom corner you will see the video box. Now currently this is showing blank because I haven't actually selected the video input. If you click the little cog in the bottom corner and select SmartLink HDMI, after a second or two the main video input will appear. Now I've currently got this connected to my GH5 looking at the ear unit on the bench. Now you can select the HDMI inputs by the options in the right hand side and once it is connected you have the ability to move the video screen about floating depending on where you want to put it. You can also swap it between full screen and normal size and you can also adjust the size of the screen as well depending on how large you want it. Now to do the adjustment you simply go down to the bottom right hand corner and drag it smaller and larger or you simply double tap on the screen to swap it between full screen and then it makes the map screen smaller rather than the camera itself. Now looking around the rest of the ground station you have all of the usual functionality such as the mode buttons down the right hand side, you have a recording option and a you also have the ability to select either the HDMI 1 or HDMI 2 input depending on which one you're using. Then along the top you have all of the usual telemetry data you'd expect to find from an Ardra Pilot or PX4 based flight controller. You have the arm switch and then you have the main settings and frame options over under the little cog on the right hand side that allows you just to change the settings on the flight controller as well as the other options too. Now it should be said that this ground station is is designed to be used with their own flight controller and you may find not all of this functions when using a Ardra Pilot or PX4 based one. However, it does give you some of the options and as I've said earlier, you can continue to use Mission Planner if you wanted to as well, if you prefer to use it that way. Just to demo this in Mission Planner as well, you would simply set up the streaming options as found on the Sky Drones website, put that in and once you've got it all connected, it will then synchronise and then the video will appear over the back end of the HUD. 
Now, just like whenever you use a streaming device in Mission Planner, you have all the same options available to you. You have the live video over the heads-up display, and then you can pop it out to full screen if you want to. You can adjust the size of it, and you still have all of the usual telemetry options as well, just as you would do using a normal telemetry link. Now, because this system doesn't have an RC, you would still need a separate RC control link, as there is no SBUS, but it does give you all of the functionality from Mission Planner to be able to control control your autopilot your plane drone or ground unit depending on what you want to do and you can simply go in change all the params as you normally would and then go back to the main screen and you have your video in place ready to go and that is pretty much it for this video now in my next one i'm going to take it out and about and try and demonstrate some of the range capabilities of it and actually show you it in use as well now on the bench i'll have to say the latency is actually showing up very good certainly no issues at all i haven't done any time measurements on it but i get a feeling for latency when you've been testing digital systems for a lot of time like i have and it's certainly nothing i'm concerned with at all again you're not going to be mounting this on a racing drone so i'm not looking at the same kind of latency levels that DJI are getting down at sub 30 milliseconds. They say 100 milliseconds. From my personal bench testing, I can well believe that. I need to test what it is like out and about at range as well, and I'll be doing that in the next video. Now, it is an interesting system that it does have the onboard companion in the ear unit as well, as does another of other systems. The nice thing with this one is that it does allow you to build it into a ground station with the separate base unit rather than have, say, an all-in-one RC unit. But it all depends what you're going to want to do with your system and depends if you're going to connect it up to their own flight controller from Sky Drones, or you're going to be using it with something like PX4 or Ardra Pilot because it is fully compatible with both. So what we'll do in the next one is we'll get it out and about and demo it in action there too. If you've liked what you've seen in this video, please do subscribe to the channel. There's a button in the bottom right hand corner and if you press that, you'll get updates on any videos that we release in the future. Please do like and share. If you've got any comments on this, please toss them in the video as well. Put them in the comment section and I will try to answer any questions I have as well. That's it. Thank you for watching and I will do another one again soon.